startup circle, which is close to uh, Country Road uh, 319. And uh, I'm a runner, so I'm pretty much out on the road there. And um, I'm seeing multiple issues on 307 and 319. One is speeding. Uh, there's a lot of speeding around there. It's more than once I have to jump in the grass. Um, other thing is DUI, open container or littering, whatever you call it. Uh, so many outdoor containers out there and then they get shredded by the mowers. Uh, so you have sharp objects there also. But uh, there's a steep increase in, in, the, in the alcohol cans, especially here. Uh, they're thrown out the side of the road. Um, theft of street signs, Sheriff, I think you're aware of that. <laughs> street signs just get stolen. And uh, dumping of dogs. Uh, that's one thing that concerns me uh, a lot. So speeding, I believe, is uh, purely a, a thing the sheriff is working on. Uh, DUI, um, open container and littering, I think that's a thing that has to be addressed by multiple entities uh, because there's no sign around there warning people that uh, there's a fine on it and so on and so forth. Um, and um, obviously it's not enforced at all. Um, the other thing is, um, is uh, dumping the dogs, which is a uh, People may see that's just old people throw out the box. They come from the city in the evenings, they throw them out. But it is a high stress on the community at the moment because it's too much, it's too heavy. Um, there are multiple issues there also. One is road safety. Uh, the last dog I found was 88 pounds. Um, hidden that in the night by a car and this dog was on the road. Um, it's, it's high damage on vehicle and threatening life. And um, you could discuss, yeah, that happens with deer also. There's a difference. Somebody dumping a dog there and liberally, uh, um, you know, risking life of other people. Then public health, we have no idea about those dogs. They may be sick, they may be not. You may be bitten, they may be aggressive. We have no idea. Um, the other thing is, uh, it's plainly a violation of Texas being a court. court. So, uh, it has to be uh, looked at. And as I said, it's a high uh, emotional stress on community. All the shelters are full up to the north of San Antonio. It's absolutely no place for dogs anymore. Um, foster homes are full. They're not taking any dogs anymore. So if you find a dog, you have the option, leave it there and leave the situation as it is, or take it in and then you're stuck with it. Um, people are fed up of it. And here in my neighbors, uh, we're a military family, so we're moving a lot. I'm here for a little more than a year. So I have to rely on what my neighbors are telling me who are living there for a decade and only so on they say every year the same thing. Before Christmas, dogs get kicked out that they can buy new puppies. And um, the situation is just getting out of hand. Um, I had a gentleman <coughs> stop outside of the road when we took the last dog in. Oh, I'm gonna shoot it. What solution is that, shooting a dog on the road? Uh, I don't think it's legal in the first place and second, it's not ethical at all. Um, so in general, um, I think this, this also has a high impact on, on the community in terms of we are not walking our dogs anymore because there are too many strays out there. Uh, other people don't want to go out anymore and you know, go walking uh, because the dogs are there. So it has a high impact on, on everybody and it needs to be addressed by multiple entities. One is definitely law enforcement and I know the sheriff office is on it. Uh, but also political entities have to be aware, uh, education has to be there, um, the shelters have to be involved uh, and support it more and, um, and definitely also the community. Um, so we really have to do something about that uh, because some people are just violating laws, others have to pick it up and are stuck with it and there's no solution. So I would like to call on everybody and I'm happy to work with one or all of you to address this problem in, in multiple entities. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. So we cannot comment because it's not an agenda item, but action will be taken. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Are there any more? Yes, sir. Thank you. There it is. Okay. Moving to agenda item number four, certificates of completion and awards. I have none at this time. Okay. And agenda item number five, extension activity reports the handouts. And do y'all have anything that y'all would like to say? Well, um, we would like to just remind everybody that we're having our um, the breakfast this morning down in Judge Jackson's conference room once court ends. Is there I don't know that there was anything else. We appreciate all y'all's support throughout the year, so we're excited for the new year to start rolling in. And everybody's invited. Yes, yes.
anybody have any questions or comments? Like y'all have been working, it's fixing to get busier. Thank y'all. Okay. Agenda item number six, Richard L. Jackson County Judge of 9.30. So at 9.30, we'll come back to agenda item number six. Uh, agenda item number seven, Richard L. Jackson County Judge 7A, discuss and take action on reappointment of race gags, Eddie Calendar, and Carlos Salazar to the ESD number three board. So they've all expressed an interest in staying on, and they've all done a good job. So they need to be there. They're good people. Yes, they've done it. The ES, they've done a good job. Do you need a motion for that? Yes, we do. I make a motion that we we reappoint Ray Skaggs, Eddie Calendar, and Carlos Salazar to this ESD number three board. Second. Motion by Commissioner Wally, second by Commissioner Canola that we reappoint the board of the ES three member ESD members, Ray Skaggs, Eddie Calendar, and Carlos Salazar. Is there any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So we've got that. So now we're moving to 7B, discuss and take action on accepting letter of resignation from Jeff Ochendeers from ESD number five board. And I've, everybody got a copy, I put it in their box in the auditor's office. Judge, uh, I'll make a motion that we accept the letter of resignation of Jeff Ochendeer from the ESD five. Second. Motion by Commissioner File, second by Commissioner Martin, we accept Jeff Ocean Deer's designation letter. Is there any more discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. So now we're going to 7C, discuss and take action on the reappointment of Lino Orocha <coughs> and appointments of Chris Orocha and David Ortiz to the ESD5 board. Yeah, Judge, uh, so we got these the information on these folks, and uh, I talked to them, and they're willing to serve, so I'll make a motion to reappoint Lionel Rocha and to appoint Chris Rocha and David Ortiz to the ESD5 board, and Mr. Rocha and Mr. Ortiz are here this morning. I'll second it. Motion by Commissioner Martin, second by Commissioner File, that we reappoint uh, Lionel Rocha and appoint Chris Rocha and David Ortiz to the ESD5 board. Is there any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We'll swear you all in just a second. And let's do uh, 7D, discuss and take action on appointing John H. Burleson, Jr. to the ESC number two board. And Judge, uh, I talked to Mr. Burleson. He's willing to serve. Uh, he's a former Houston Fire Department police captain. Senior captain. Senior captain. Yeah, he's got a lot of experience with fire. I think he'll make an excellent addition to that board. Obviously, he's present this morning. So I'll make a motion to appoint John H. Burleson, Jr. to the ESD number two board. I'll second. second. Okay, motion by Commissioner Martin, second by Commissioner Wiley. We appoint John H. Burleson, Jr. to the ESD number two board. Is there any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. So, if y'all want to get sworn in this morning, let's step up here and we'll get y'all sworn in. <coughs> Okay, I'll repeat it when I say I, y'all repeat y'all's name, and then when I say the duties of the office, then you say your particular board, which one you're going to be on. So, you raise your right hand. In the name and by the authority of the state of Texas, oath of office, I, Chris John Burroughs, and David Ortiz, do solemnly swear or affirm, solemnly swear or affirm, affirm, that I will faithfully execute the duties, that I will faithfully execute the duties, of the Office of Commissioner, <coughs> Office of the number two. Okay. Of the State of Texas. Of the State of Texas. And will to the best of my ability. And will to the best of my ability. Protect, preserve, and defend. Protect, preserve, and defend. The Constitution and laws. The Constitution and laws. Of the United States. Of the United States. And of this state. And of this state. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Thank y'all. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank y'all for what you do. If y'all want to, let's see. I'll get you these. If you don't want to come over here, come around, and the county clerk will help you get you a sign on. And I'll sign them, and y'all want copies. <coughs>
Okay, we can go on to agenda <laughs> item number eight. Uh, we'll have to wait for yes, Commissioner Martin to get back before we take action, but we can let the sheriff explain. So, agenda item number eight, Richard Jackson County Judge, Jim Stewart County Sheriff, discuss possible action on approving Lexipool service agreements for the Wilson County Sheriff. Thank you for agreeing to Sure. Are you going to do it? Well, okay. I'm going to let Sheriff explain them all, but I do. He, he brought the contracts okay. to me to review. Um, this would go out of his software budget. I had council review the, uh, the contracts, so I'll let the Sheriff explain what Lexipol is and, and what his, his goal is with them, but all looks fine on our, on our end. So, Sheriff? What well, Lexipo is this? They're, they're associated with PAC, and uh, they basically create policies for the jail and the sheriff's office, police departments, whatnot. And uh, as y'all are going through policy change here, I need to update the policy in my office also with all the new statutory changes and everything else. I know where our policy is not completely in line. Well, after being involved with this policy, I understand that I don't have enough employees to design a policy. And by the time I did, it would be out of date already. This company will design will design my policy and keep it current in the future, which would prevent me from having an employee to do nothing but that. And uh, an employee is going to cost us a minimum of forty some thousand dollars. I think annually they're going to cost me about twenty something. So I'd actually be economically feasible to have them oversee it than to hire somebody to keep up the policy in the future. If they update the policy, does the commissioner's court have to no. approve it? No. I have to approve it. You have to approve it. They send it to me saying, we're, re we're requesting this policy change based on whatever. I review it. If I am not in agreement with it, I don't have to accept it. If I accept it, that's the one thing they do. They also send it out and make sure that every employee has read it, understands it, and sends them back a response to the policy change. So it, they actually keep all employees current with any policy revision. And just for clarification, this is um, law enforcement policies, which are completely separate. There's hundreds of them, and I, the sheriff's policies right now, there's probably, I don't even know how many, but we it's huge. And it's everything related to law enforcement that is completely separate from like an employee manual. This is more a law enforcement policy manual. And I believe, doesn't it have, because it's also it's the county training as it's well? It's corrections, law enforcement policy, and training, annual training on covering all of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's around $20,000 annually? That's what I think it's going to cost somewhere in the neighborhood of there's uh, okay. right. there's, there's, there's two different contracts. To, One contract is for the actual creation and update of all of the law, enfo law enforcement policies. That total is twenty two thousand two eighty four forty five, um, and that it's based on the number of sworn officers that the sheriff has, um, and number of beds in the in the jail as well. So they're specific to our our jail. 
And then the second agreement here That's what I'm trying is, to figure out. is for the police uh, the academy training. It's the okay. police one academy annual uh, training. And again, it's based on the number of officers. And this one is $7,608 and two cents. So they can train completely off of the internet or off pretty much. Okay. Except for what few courses T. Cole still requires you to attend in person. Yes, they can get yeah. almost everything online. Okay. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, yes, yeah, so uh, it is a one year contract and yes. it would have to renew yes. year after year. And this again would go in his uh, software, computer software budget. I think it's a good idea. And you have that in your budget already? Yes. I'll make a motion, Judge, that we approve the sheriff to. Uh, Contract with uh, next school service agreement. I'll second it. Motion by Commissioner File, second by Commissioner Whitey that we agree both Lexi Pool Master Service Agreements uh, for the Sheriff's Office. Is there any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Sheriff, if you don't mind, um, I'll take them to my office to make the copies for my office, give a copy to the county clerk, and then I'll give you the original and you can send it off to Lexington. Gotcha. That's, That's got work. the payment terms on there. Okay. I want to make sure we pay them accordingly. Okay. Okay, agenda item number nine, Rebecca Scriven, Permits and Development Director, 9A, Utility Permit, A1, Permit Number 704, Southern Springs Water Supply Corporation, Precinct 4, County Road 305, Review and Approve, and uh, we can do A2, Permit Number 705, Southern Springs Water Supply Corporation, Precinct 4, uh, it says County Acres, but shouldn't that be Country Acres Drive? Uh, review and approve. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> All right. Permit number 704 is a proposed four for a uh, one inch service, or sorry, yes. one inch service line with a two inch casing about a mile northwest of FM 539. County Road 305 for a 16 acre tract on the northwest side of 305. We're going to take the two together. Can we approve them both at the same time? Yes, they're both yours. Okay. And then for permit number 705 is on Country Acres Drive. It's also a one inch service line with a two inch casing for or proposed to bore. It's 3,000 feet south of FM 3432. Judge, I make a motion that we approve permit number 704 and number 705. Second. Motion by Commissioner Wiley, second by Commissioner Bernal that we approve permit number 704 and permit number 705. Is there any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. So. <laughs> Moving right along to 9B, non-standard plats and variances, 
B1, 9B1, County Road 331-1353, Precinct 2, Radicky, discuss and take action. All right, this variance request is the property owner is requesting to divide out 0.9 of an acre. It is a variance request from our one acre minimum in the regulations and a non standard flat request as typical. She's trying to sell it for financial reasons, and she did work with my office to get it from 0.75 that they were trying to sell before they came to us and got it up to 0.9. She can't get it up to any more due to the way the structures and the driveway is laid out in the property. They did receive a favorable recommendation from the committee and met all the requirements. Which I have the survey for y'all. acres but the way the structures are laid out there is no way to get both the 40 acre or I'm sorry 40 foot road frontage to get to the portion of property that would be large enough and she does have a seller already interested in ready to pay I'm sorry a buyer already interested a baseball field or what no. <laughs> no. There's a, a shed. Well, yeah, that's what right. they had to make it. Yeah, it says cover, but some kind yeah. of shed, and then that got a tree and a T post. And the, 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 are they the, using those for boundary the, markers? The road actually goes on the outside of that fence, and yeah. she's not wanting to move her road. So that's why they put the fence like that. Okay. She'd have to move her road, and move her driveway, to to gain more than a. the point nine acres is this approved by the committee yes, yes sir i make a motion judge that we approve uh county road 331 uh, 1353 county road 331 uh, a variance okay second motion by commissioner file second by commissioner perdona we have approved the variance at 1353 county road 331 is there any more discussion all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. So now we're moving to 9B2, FM 1347-12725, Precinct 3, Low C, discuss and take action. Please speak to The survey is being passed down, but Mr. Lausanne is proposing to cut out two acres from his 200-acre tract. Um, he does already have a buyer, all utility services, and TxDOT was currently in place, so they did receive approval, and it received a favorable recommendation from the committee. And they got approval from TxDOT, you said? Yes, there's already a dri uh, an existing driveway. Judge, I make a motion that we approve um, FM 1347, uh, 12725, uh, Closing um, as presented. Second. Okay, motion by Commissioner Wiley, second by Commissioner Perot that we approve the, uh, the variance at uh, FM 12725, FM 1347. Is there any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. That's Curly Closing's house. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Colton Westmore. Colton? Colton? They bought it. They didn't get this done. They're trying to get everything done. Yes, Ronald. They had an a interest rate locked in. Stepping in touch. He, he is a, he's a character. Okay, 
We're moving to 9C subdivision, Fadera Ridge subdivision amended plat, uh, 9C1 review and approve final plat and discuss and take action. All right, so the Fadera Ridge subdivision. It is Fadera Ridge subdivision. 320. 320. 181 and 320. Yep. Okay. Of town here. So this is an amended plat for the Fredera Ridge subdivision. They are supposed to request. They applied to submit an amended plat for drainage corrections to the lots. There was a change in culvert location from between lot one and fifty on the original plat and they corrected it to between lots four and 47. And also adding an eight foot utility easement on which lot? Lot 25 and 24. Yes. That is just to help uh, the utility company service their poles. And <laughs> the correction was needed due to when they were out there working and moving the dirt and everything they saw that there was a low spot and the water was gonna be held and not flow as it did on the original plot so this is the drainage for that and correcting the problem that would have happened There's nothing here, no. but they don't go make the vessel. Yeah, but these are the lots here. Regal Lake, yeah. I guess that doesn't tie it again. So no, you can't go out the back of the Regal Lake. No, okay. No, okay. It runs here and can run all the way back down here. Okay. And it did meet all the requirements and received a favorable recommendation. Judge, I make a motion that we approve the final plat. Uh, approve the final plat for. But there are the there are ridge. Okay. But I want to be noted, Judge, I, as commissioner, I still have concerns about them dumping the water onto the people next door at, at from lots five, eight, and seven. And three. A lot of water's coming out on the corner of both lot three and lot five. Yes. I'll second the motion. Okay. You made the motion? Mm -hmm. You second in the motion? Yes, motion by Commissioner File, second by Commissioner Perdola. We approve the plat, but uh, even though with a, a mention of that, all it has to do is say, hey, we brought it to your attention, but uh, on the our Rain engineers engine. approved it, so okay. and engineers approved it, so it's going. Okay, is there any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. 
It is 9.32. We are going back to agenda item number six, Richard L. Jackson County Judge at 9.30. We're going to open the bids for material hauling, material plus hauling. So, uh, What's that? Yes. Any motion? I'll, I'll make a motion to open the bids. A second. Motion by Commissioner Martin, second by Commissioner Powell to open the bids. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Yeah. I believe I have a total of eight. And again, this is for a flexible base and asphalt material build. The first one is from Texas Materials Group. I'm sorry? Where are we? Texas Materials Group is out of Cedar Park, Texas. We're just going to open the bids and we're yes, going to we'll just them. open the bids and uh, after, after today we'll go back and do the bid tabulation and then we hope to bring it to Commissioner's Court on the 27th for uh, your consideration of awarding. Can't we wait till January? <laughs> <laughs> the next one is 181 materials so out of Coast, of Texas. <laughs> Nine O transport and sales out of Three Rivers, Texas. Gem Materials, G I'm sorry, G E M Materials out of Selma, Texas. Brontex material out of New Braunfels, Texas. Ergon asphalt and emulsions, Austin, Texas. Colorado Materials, San Marcos, and the last one, out of Scosa Materials, out of Pleasanton, Texas. And we will have the bid tab ready for you sometime this week. Everybody wants to contact the camera. If anybody needs to contact the auditor's office about that, feel free. Okay, so we'll know more in two weeks. So now, Edwin, agenda item 10, Edwin Baker, Fire, Fire Marshal, EMC Health and Public Safety. 10A, discuss and approve adopting the burn ban. It worked again. We don't have to do it. <laughs> We're down to in the mid 300s, which we need to be at 550 ish uh, to look at it or think that we're going to be there. And uh, it'll be after the first of the year before we'll be eligible for a burn ban. And without the burn ban, you can't do the fireworks. Uh, fireworks uh, without being put on a burn ban, it doesn't be a problem. I would say we shouldn't put on a fireworks restriction because, once again, it needs to be at 575 or within the next two to three weeks by the first, and we're not going to be anywhere near there. Yeah. Uh, it'll be after the first before we, even if we start getting the, the dry fronts that come through 
and the freeze. Well, that's like I say, what if we get a freeze and it finally does kill them? I'm just tickled to death. We still got green grass out there. Right. Uh, I, you know, if it's bad enough, we can do an emergency declaration like we did last year. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, the, it's pretty specific in the rules. I think I sent you all that here a couple of weeks ago. But it says that if you're going to be at 575 during the fireworks se season, this fireworks season, you can restrict the certain fireworks, the skyrockets and the missiles. But that's what, that's when it says you can restrict them. And we're not going to be anywhere near that because we're 200 below that plus. Uh, so if it went down 10 a day, it'd still take 20 days to get us there. And 20 days would put us into January. And it, with moisture like this morning, if that holds true off and on from now to the end of the year, we won't even get close to it. The good part is we got some rain. Yes. Some areas got some a little bit more than one. Yeah, more than others. And yeah. some of us got four cats. Yeah. <laughs> some of us a little better. <laughs> <laughs> but your roads didn't get washed out. <laughs> no, they didn't. So we can't do anything so with the I, I wouldn't advise doing anything with it. You know, so we're so far down. If we were a little closer, it'd be different. We were uh, last week when I was watching it before this rain hit. We were in that area, that, that gray area, to where we, it was worth serious consideration on whether we did it or not. Uh, it doesn't mean we'd make that 575, but we would have been close to it. And, uh, you know, by now we should have had a freeze, and we have Yeah, thank God we haven't had it. Yeah. It's getting close to it. Uh, <coughs> while you're standing up there, in okay, case we're probably not going to... We're not going to take any action on the burn ban. Let's do 10B, discuss and approve adopting restrictions of certain fireworks classified under 49 CFR section 173.100R2, okay, 10-1-86 edition as skyrockets with sticks and missiles with fins. Okay, and then you're also yeah. advising that we can't do that since we're well, not going to... Well, I'm not going to say you can't. The court can do whatever it wants to. I'm just advising you don't do it because that kind of draws in lawsuits. You know, that uh, uh, years ago when we banned, I uh, did an emergency declaration and banned all fireworks, <coughs> it didn't, even though we had, everybody had a legitimate reason to do that and the law behind them, there still were several lawsuits. Wilson County was not named in them, but the bigger counties were. And uh, now, they won the lawsuit, but it became a lawsuit if somebody has to mess with that. The disaster declaration is a lot more restrictive yes. than the, just, the just firework that. ban. The firework ban does not ban all aerial fireworks. No. In fact, it, it, the, the only ones that I think that it bans that really do some good are the bottle rockets because they tend to do those by hand <laughs> instead of bottles like they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. And uh, But the... the uh, you know, you still got the Roman candles, you got the big ball fireworks with up to 500 grams of, of powder in them, and you know, it, it just, those are even bigger and, and uh, cause just as much threat. But like I say, the difference is in bottle rockets, you can hold it in your hand and throw it out in the dry field. And the disaster declaration, it also bans sales. Yes, it would ban the sales at that point. And that, some people that count on that income. That you are correct. Year. You are, we have uh, three private stands in our county. In other words, it's citizens that live in our county that own these stands and count on that for money. It's extra money, but they count on that for extra money every year. And uh, then we have uh, Alamo and, and Mr. W. Well, we got four because we still have the big one north of town. That's an independent, so to speak. The guy who runs it lives in the county. But the guy who owns it lives in Houston. And so, you know, that, that's where we're at on it. I mean, it, it's entirely up to y'all where y'all want to go with it, but uh, mm -hmm. my recommendation is we just leave it alone. I'm good with that. I love everybody else.
Yeah. I'll send everybody up on three, County Road 352. They shoot all the fireworks they want. <laughs> it's wet. 352, 347. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> okay, so actually uh, no action taken on 10 A and B. Thank you, Evan. <laughs> Okay, moving right along to agenda item 11, Eva S. Martinez County Park minutes. Yes, sir. We've got them all. Right. They have been properly reviewed by our assistant county attorney and yourself. Did I make a motion for your approval? Second. A motion by Commissioner Files, second by Commissioner Cardoza. If we approve the minutes of the preceding November 14th, November 17th, and November 28th. Is there any questions, comments, additions, deletions, changes? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. So we have approved it. Okay, moving right along to agenda item 12. Jalen T. Bauter from Human Resource Specialist. If we I'll have Brenda take Trevino, one for the it looks team, like. She's having fun, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see, resignations, terminations. Joseph Sears resigned from his position as a foreman for Precinct 3, effective December 1st, 2022. Michelle Key resigned from her position as Grants Coordinator with the Auditor's Office effective December 2nd, 2022. Amanda Foreman was terminated from her position as a Customer Service Specialist with the Tax Office effective December 2nd, 2022. Elizabeth Silvis resigned from her position as the Jail Administrator with the Sheriff's Department effective December 9th, 2022. Retirement. John Lynn is retired as foreman for Precinct 4, effective December 31st, 2022, with 35 years of service to Wilson County. Thank you. There's a note on, on John, just to, in general, that there's been a Lynn who served in Wilson County Precinct 4, since the 30s oh, wow. Wow. through John. His grandfather, his father before he moved into Precinct 3, and John's been there 35 years. So it's you can't find another Lynn? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't think so. So John's been in Road and Bridge, Precinct 4, for the last 35 years, same yes. position. Yes. I think since he got out of high school, wasn't he? Exactly. Yeah. And his dad was there before him, but 
redistricting, redistrict them out of Precinct 4. I think there might have been a time where all three of them were in Precinct 4 briefly. Yes, I think. Harold, right before be he really retired. Close to that. And then Bobby and, and John all. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, you've got that. So now it's really your turn. Yeah, yeah. Agenda yeah. item 13, Brenda El Camino yeah. County Archer Bills. Yes, so um, I've got $497,128.92 that I've reviewed and approved. Um, Is that the one? Oh, if we keep doing that, are we going to run out of money? <coughs> no, fortunately, these are regular stuff. It takes a lot of money to make this whole world go around. It does. You ain't getting any cheaper. No. <laughs> no. Not at all. Oh, yes, I talked to him about it, yes. Well, yeah, I thought it was going to be, I guess he didn't talk to you, so I talked to him last week. So I have, a, I have one more, uh, it's an estimate, it's not an actual bill yet that's not included in there because I didn't have your, uh, your review for it yet, but um, this comes from Edwin Baker, Edwin's back there in the corner. He purchased a truck. Uh, for civil preparedness out of the civil preparedness fund, I don't know, a, few months, a couple months, two months ago, I think. Um, and he has presented an invoice uh, or an estimate to get that vehicle outfitted out of the uh, civil preparedness fund. Um, and it did not get onto the agenda as a separate line item, so I asked Judge if I could include it in my uh, line item for payment for approval for payment um, the total for outfitting that vehicle is sixteen thousand one hundred and eleven dollars and sixty two cents to be paid out of the civil preparedness fund which there are more than sufficient enough funds in there but the vehicle does need it um, in order it for it to be operable uh, what kind of vehicle is it I'll let Edwin it's, a, it. two, it's a 2022 Dodge pickup we already bought the vehicle. I just need to get it outfitted with them. I found myself out of wrecks and other calls with no emergency lights to put my flashers on and it's something, no radios in it. And right now it's just a plain pickup with markings. So nothing in it other than uh, uh, the normal stuff that it comes in a pickup. Is that the white one with the red lettering on? Yes, sir. And we do have that money budgeted, uh, budgeted for that, and it, it, it works out good, Judge, because the, the vehicle was actually uh, purchased last in last fiscal year's budget, and so we still have the money budgeted, uh, which can will yeah. be used to, to pay for this. Um, but I didn't. I just wanted you guys to be aware of it before I process it. Uh, who will be driving this vehicle? Who's driving the vehicle? It'll be me. Oh. Yeah, my, my Tahoe, I was in the shop here a couple of weeks ago. I plan on just using it to, doing the markings and stuff like we're proposing here, but driving that Tahoe uh, until it went out, and it's got over 200,000 miles on it. And the last time I had it in the shop, uh, I think it came out to about fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars worth of work done on it. I drove it uh, to the office and the light came back on, took it back over there. They did some more work on it. And before I got uh, home that evening, the light came back on and I haven't, I just parked it. It's make, the lifters are gone in it. They're just, it runs, but it's on its last leg. They said they don't have any hope for it other than replacing an engine, which it costs probably anywhere from seven to $10,000 today. This is off from last year's budget or? 
No, yeah. this will be in this year's budget, which it's already budgeted. Okay. The vehicle but was purchased in last year's. But still doesn't make a difference because it's all coming out. It's, it's all, it's in one fund. fund. Yeah. Okay. Completely okay. separate okay. from the general fund. It's yes. a rollover fund anyway, so. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So if you would, when you consider approval of the bills, if you would include uh, this one as well. The, the ready for it's from Alamo Fire Apparatus, I think. Could that come from some of that grant money we no. No. No, this is completely separate. What is the, is the total on that? Uh sixteen thousand one hundred and eleven dollars and sixty two cents. And now this won't be paid until it's completed so it's not going to change the number on your total dollar amount of the invoices okay. presented before you but that money will come out of the emergency prepared yes sir fund. correct by Commissioner Martin, second by Commissioner Perdoe that we approve the bill including the bill for the outfitting of the emergency management vehicle. Uh, is there any more questions, additions, deletions, changes? Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. So, yeah. I guess I need to sign that. Did we get John's oil satisfied? With that? Oh yeah, they, they came. In, yeah, I went ahead and processed their their payment. They came by and picked it up. Okay. If we haven't missed anything. Agenda item number fourteen at nine fifty-four. We are adjourned. Don't forget about going downstairs into the.